Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 36 of Ultron the Real Robot. We're getting towards the end of the series from Ultron. It's been running for over a year with videos every other week. And as I said, we're on part 36, so we've done quite a lot already. This is a full mechanical robot torso with its own sort of AI, which partly runs in the physical space on Arduinos. And part of that's going to run in virtual reality, which is actually something I need to do in the future. So this AI is going to be more like a gigantic marble run, but you can go into virtual reality and move the marbles. And depending on where they fall, it will give Ultron memories. Some of those will be stored in tubes. And depending on where they fall down through different regions, it will make Ultron react in a different way and feel different emotions. These next two episodes, we're going to try and get the cosmetics done on Ultron. As you can see, there's quite a few things missing. He needs shoulder bells, he needs some more neck work. There's quite a bit missing on the lower torso and all the arm cosmetics. So these videos are going to be mostly doing CAD and doing a lot of printing and sticking all those pieces on. I brought the CAD for Ultron's torso into Fusion 360. Now, uh, the original uh, design was done in Autodesk 123 d Design, but that's getting pulled by Autodesk. You can still download it at the time of recording, but it'll be going away soon. Uh, Fusion 360 is free for startups and enthusiasts, so you can use it for free at home for your own personal projects. So this is the uh, CAD here that I've brought into Fusion 360. Fusion handles memory a lot better, so it's easier to rota rotate round and see what's going on. Um, there's some pieces pieces here that I never printed, like these pieces under the arms here, which we can now add on and see um, how we're going to attach those and check they avoid actuators and the arms and so on. But what we actually need to do is do some shoulder bells. So I spent some time working on those. So those are going to make Ultron look a lot wider and bigger in the shoulders like he should be. They may hang slightly differently. There's no fixings. They're just floating at the moment. Um, and obviously the arm needs to hang underneath. And in fact, um, they'll be fixed to the arm and the part of the shoulder that uh, moves up in one piece. So it uh, should be fine as long as they clear the shoulder plates that are already fixed on there. So um, I spent a bit of time on those. They're going to be printed in multiple parts. They're quite big. And I've already cut up the parts here and tried to put those flat on the bed so that we can print that. I think there's six different pieces there and that's going to be printed with support material to do the overhangs and they're all in ABS so we can solve and weld them back together afterwards. Here's one of those parts getting printed so this is the actual part nearest us and all the rest is all support material and it's going to bridge over that eventually. So it's about uh, two hours 40 into a five hour print. We'll pop back in a bit and see how that's looking. There we go, so now the part has joined up with its support material and it all looks good, only a little bit left to go. Here are some of the pieces, they've come out pretty well, obviously loads of these are on the support material. And that just breaks away pretty easily like that, that one I've already done. So uh, now we can uh, start sticking some of these bits together, there's a few more to print. But it's looking pretty good for an ABS print, there's no warpage or um, any problems at all there, it looks pretty good. I've assembled one half of the shoulder bells here with acetone welds and now we've got the other half to put on so I think there's been nearly 24 hours printing in each of these in total. The big parts are about 8 hours plus all the others so let's get these stuck together and we'll see how they look on Ultron. Here they are all stuck together, they mostly worked out okay, there's a couple of warp issues on the seam lines but we're not really going to see that because it's at the back. I haven't got any brackets for now, we're just going to sort of balance those on there to get an idea of scale. Let's just see if I can... Just wedge that on for now. So they look something like that in terms of sizing, which I think looks okay. I think his head might be a little bit low now, despite looking too high when I first did it. I've also got this cosmetic piece I made ages ago, which I've never actually fixed on, which goes in there. And I've also made the scoops under the arms. I've got those just here, so they will go basically each side there. And I need to make the arm cosmetics before I consider how those are fixed on, because they might need to float around or they might be fixed. But that's the sort of uh, size and things we've got now. So obviously that torso and arms are gonna get fleshed out quite a bit. Just another view there, Ultron is a bit of a pinhead really. So uh, I'm not sure if the head is the right size or not. It might be slightly too small, but um, I'm probably not gonna do anything about it. There's just another view of the sides there. So obviously the torso becomes wider. There's some more conduits and things that run up the side there. And obviously the arms are fatter, so 
We're going to do that um, before we come back and do anything to the head at all. I've designed some bicep and tricep pieces for Ultron here, which are pictured in blue and green. Um, they're a bit weird looking because they have to fit around the mechanics of the arm there. So they're not quite like Ultron, but they'll do pretty much. I've got that scoop on the side there for the tricep muscle and all those bits and pieces. Now these have to rotate as the arm rotates. And um, that rotational axis is this big gear that we've got sat um, here basically. So that'll have to fit under the shoulder bell as it does so. So we'll need to make the shoulder bell brackets. Uh, when, we, um, when we've actually got all those pieces in real life to check this clearance. So if I just move these out of the way, these are in fact going to mount onto this piece, which is the part that holds the motor and everything to pull the bicep up. So that part rotates around as the arm rotates. Here's half of one of the triceps being printed. Here's one of those outer bicep parts. I've had to split it into two so that I can get it on the print bed. And in fact, this is the only part that's part of it. The rest is support material at the moment because it's a rather funny shape to be cut out around those um, bits of mechanics. So it's started printing everything on the support material now and that seems to be going pretty well. So uh, hopefully that's all right. Here's the other half of that piece. Again, there's quite a lot of support material and we're talking about three to four hour prints for each piece. Here are those pieces. So I've solvent welded the uh, halves together there. We've got the backs are fixed together and that's the inner bicep. So we now need to offer those up to Ultron and check they fit around all the mechanics. All right, so you notice this gear sticking out of the back here and I've actually left a hole in here for the, uh, to, get, to go around the gear so I can get this nice and tight. And this piece cunningly slots into the front of the bicep there about like that. This hole here is for the motor to poke out. So if I just pop that on there, this thing needs to come a bit lower. We can adjust all of this to get it on just right around the mechanics. The only thing I haven't taken account for is the feedback pot arm there, which I just need to move probably to the other side. So I've mounted up both sides of my bicep there. The tricep piece is on there and now the arm can still rotate okay. The back piece in fact isn't fixed on because it's quite close to that gear and I need to place it properly. But it seems all right at the moment. So there probably will be a cover on the front, although I quite like seeing this moving in the gears and they are red, so it's a bit like the inside of Ultron. So I have to decide on that. It might be a translucent piece that gets added on there somewhere. But uh, for now, that's it for the bicep. So if I just grab that shoulder bell again, you can see we've got a stick here to mount it on. So I just need to make a socket so that can sort of plug on. And hopefully that will fit just on there roughly. And if I'm lucky, the... Uh, arm there should rotate just underneath it and that should clear it fine so I just need to make the other half of the bracket. I've made the sockets in the shoulder bells there so those can just poke on top and those are more ABS parts solvent welded in. All right so we just put one on there and one on there so I think that's about the right position they're quite sort of high and bold but his shoulder bells are like that I think the head is definitely too low but we'll sort that out next time once I've had a look at it. The arm rotation is fine there we just need to check that the arm can still lift outwards okay and that shoulder bell fit over the other shoulder part. Right, so let's just pull that arm up. Let's just see if that works. It seems like I can, uh, using the force feedback, manipulate him all around and his shoulders still uh, go up to a reasonable height and all the arm rotation works. Let's just try rotating him. So have a look at last time to see how this works. So I seem to have still... Uh, a free range of motion there with uh, the back drive ability and the full sensitive resistors built into the joints. His head's a bit confused. Well, there we go, his hearing still works. So those shoulders are quite big. Obviously, he does look quite skinny in the body, but we still have those bits of conduit to come up and we've got these scoops still to attach. Now, these are going to attach at the front here and they're also going to attach to that conduit, which I think is attached to this actuator. So that's also going to be something I do next time to flesh out that body which will make him a bit wider in the torso, so he should look a bit better proportioned. I need to tidy up the electronics on Ultron generally, but there is one thing I need to replace before we even do that. So uh, I intended to replace the sound system, and um, I've got these tiny speakers you can just see about here that have come out of a hacked Bluetooth speaker, and that's how the sound gets from the brain into Ultron. So I'm gonna use these instead, but obviously we still need an amp to power them and some way to receive the Bluetooth audio. So I've got a couple of things I picked up on eBay. Both of them have Bluetooth receivers in. This one is just a Bluetooth and FM 
uh, receiver with a panel mount and it also has an aux in. It's got a remote and everything and actually I've uh, seen these operating before, they're pretty good. They do just turn up as a Bluetooth speaker basically. They've got audio out and power in. There's no amp in there though, so I'd still need a power amp to actually power the speakers. The other thing is what appears to be very similar, it's got a very similar remote in fact, um, and that one has an amp built in. Um, which I think it claimed it was something like 2 by 20 watts, but it feels very light. So I'm not sure if that's really true, um, but we can open that up and see what's inside. But that's probably going to be the solution, provided it works. So here's what's inside. So there's a, the amp chip is just this thing here, which is a TDA7297, which is a 15 watt stereo amp. So it's 15 watts and uh, two channels. And the rest of this is all the other stuff for the FM radio and all that stuff. This is the Bluetooth receiver for Bluetooth audio. That's got the USB and SD slot on as well. And the uh, USB, so you can plug in a USB uh, key full of MP3s, I assume. Um, that's the power socket there, which um, does actually float really near the case. So I might put some tape under that when I put it back together. Of course, the other option is to use this Bluetooth receiver and separate amps. And I've got some modules here, which are TDA 2030s. And that's a, a uh, 14 watt amp, so we'd need a pair of those and this, and we can make something almost the same, but we'll see if this operates. And if it works okay, I guess we'll use it, because it's got speaker terminals and all the things helpfully on there. Well, it powers up and flashes its lights in a rather pretty fashion. It says blue, and if I change this, it says 91.4 FM, and if I press this again, it says aux, then it says blue again. It's got a volume control and everything, so I guess we'll get some uh, Bluetooth uh, audio transmitter, of some sort and connect the speakers up and see if it works. So I've got this Bluetooth audio transmitter that's normally plugged into Ultron's speech synth and an audio processor to do the voice effects. And this is now paired to the Bluetooth in here. And I've got some AC-DC on here and this is um, actually pretty loud. So... so yeah, you can hopefully see the cones shaking there. But yeah, that's a pretty loud amp, so that's gonna be more than good enough for Ultron's voice. I'm making a speaker mount to hold the speakers and those are going to be attached to the base of the tripod somewhere. So those fit just there on the bottom of the tripod. On the back there we've got a place to put a cable tie through to tie it down at some point. They'll probably sit there okay but that'll just keep it a bit more secure. And we need to tidy up the rest of the electronics that you can see hanging at the back here so that needs a nice box. And we can fit that amp in there somewhere as well on the bottom of the tripod. I'm pretty happy with the proportions we've got there. The shoulder bells definitely make him look a lot more like Ultron. Next time I'll be working my way down the torso to widen up those sides there and also do the forearm co uh, cosmetics, which we haven't looked at at all. After that, we can see how the head looks. We need to probably widen up the neck a bit and build up the back here and maybe reposition the head, but we'll have to see how it looks. But basically, I'm out of 3D printer time this week, so that's all there is. But don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and other projects, including my human-sized walking robot project, which is currently getting dressed up as Bender from Futurama. Also, various mixed and virtual reality projects coming. You should also check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash xrobots where you can get access to some exclusive rewards including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. Alright, that's all for now.